G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so Sunday afternoon here in Australia, that makes it Sunday morning uh, in other parts of the world, and the market seems to be holding steady, a little bit of a pullback, so we haven't really seen a weekend retracement yet, but it could be the Sunday weekend retracement, i.e. even sort of really late Monday, uh, really early Monday morning, I mean, so you know, midnight Sunday uh, night, midnight, you know, sort of Monday morning, whichever you want to call it, we could see a retracement there and it could be a hefty one. We don't really know yet, we're just waiting to see. But before we get into the markets, let's have a look at an interesting uh, article I found. So, one coin, so probably the biggest Ponzi sort of scheme ever in cryptocurrency space, uh, obviously was busted a little while ago, uh, and their marketing guru was currently trying to make a plea. Uh, and there's an interesting part down the bottom that uh, makes me not doubt why he's trying to make a plea. But I'll read on first. So the public face of OneCoin is in plea talks for a range of charges. According to, courts, uh, according to court reports on Friday, yet another suspected player behind the OneCoin Ponzi scheme is now set to face justice. On Friday, counsel for marketing guru Carl, Carl Sebastian Greenwood uh, and U.S. prosecutors inform uh, Manhattan Judge uh, Eduardo Ramos that the two sides are currently discussing a plea deal for Greenwood, who was indicated in 2018 for charges relating to his involvement in the OneCoin Ponzi. So, I mean, this was massive, and what was even more uh, sort of weird about it is this happened during the bear market. Uh, you know, Bitcoin had dropped substantially, and then they started this thing, and it just went off its head, and, you know, well over a billion dollars of investor funds were sort of swindled. But we go down the bottom here. So, one coin case and its aftermath has proven to be one of the messiest in crypto's history, and a movie based on the events is even set to enter production, with star Kate Winslet along with a separate BBC series in the works. Additionally, despite the ongoing litigation, Greenwood should consider himself lucky that court's all he has to worry about at the moment. Uh, Ignavatos, oh, I'm sure, Ing Ingnat. To, I don't even know how to say that. I'm just butchering it. But anyway, this is the lady that was the head of the ring. Her personal lawyer, uh, Mark S. Scott, he was disbarred in November following his conviction for money laundering. And two other marketers involved with promoting OneCoin were found dead after a reported kidnapping in July. So, <laughs> you know, this, uh, this Greenwood, he's probably lucky to be alive and I have no doubt he's trying to enter a plea bargain. Jail may be the safest place for him uh, for quite some time. And no doubt he's going to want to be out of, you know, like mainstream and he's going to be organising a deal where he goes to jail and he's in sort of isolation so no one can get to him and all the rest of it. Because the lady who was running the show, she's still on the loose. She hasn't been found. And other people that are involved, i.e. two marketers, uh, they were reportedly kidnapped uh, and then sh showed up dead later. So... Uh, yeah, I'd be wanting to make a deal pretty quickly too to try and uh, save my skin. And look, it'd be interesting to see whether he makes a plea deal by giving back some of the money uh, if he has access to it anymore. You know, it, it, it's hard to know. But, you know, crime doesn't pay. You know, it, it, it's a, you know, anyone who's involved in, involved in shady stuff, it's the law of statistics. You might get away with it once, you might get away with it twice. You might get away with it 10 times. But the more times you do it, the closer you are to getting caught. That's simply the way it works. Eventually, your luck will run out. So, you know, you might get lucky and commit a crime once and then nothing ever happens. Then congratulations to you. You got lucky. But these days, there's very little sort of, and particularly crimes like this, that go, you know, unpunished and all the rest of it. It's just not worth it. And, you know, there's... A lot of people out there with one billion dollars worth of missing funds you know i think once these people are caught you know they deserve everything that they get unfortunately you know if you can't make your own money legitimately then don't go out and steal other people's and rip them off that's just really cheap and shitty in my opinion all right so again the markets have been doing really well and then we see this article three reasons why traders expect continuation after bitcoin price uh, spikes to twenty four thousand. This has me worried immediately. The fact that people are thinking it's going to go up, uh, and again, it's been going up for such a long time, and I'm not saying it can't go up, but let's have a look. Fear and greed index. 
I'm going to say it's probably still unbelievably high. Ninety-two. That is pretty high. At some stage, we're going to have to have a hefty correction. Whether it happens now, whether it happens at thirty-five thousand, whether it happens at fifty thousand, that's the unknown. But if we were to have a forty percent correction from here, we're going down to nearly in the thirteen thousand dollars. So it's just something we need to keep in mind. Now, also come over to here. Here was an interesting one. So Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong issues serious warning as Bitcoin surges toward 25,000. So Bitcoin has surged higher again, soaring to a fresh new all-time highs and over 24,000 per Bitcoin after beginning the week at under 19,000. The Bitcoin price uh, up a staggering 30% this week alone, climbed to 24,220 on the Luxembourg-based uh, uh, Bitstamp Bitcoin and cryptocurrency exchange before, excuse me, falling back slightly. Now, however, amid this week's huge Bitcoin and cryptocurrency Santa rally, which has added over 100 billion to the value of the world's digital tokens, Coinbase chief executive uh, Brian Armstrong has warned over the risk of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency investing. Uh, considering he runs Coinbase, uh, I do find that somewhat interesting. I think, well, oh look, there are risks. But if you had a look at traditional markets, they're as risky. They jump up and drop down and all over the place and are completely being propped up by, you know, helicopter money and stimulus and all the rest of it. I would say investing in general is risky. Don't get me wrong. I do agree that cryptocurrencies is more risky, but not all of it. I think Bitcoin's here to stay. I think Ethereum's here to stay. I think Litecoin's here to stay. I think XRP will be get will get regulated and be here to stay. I think Chainlink will do very well. I think there are a number of cryptocurrencies out there that have real long world potential. You can go into the stock market and find things that aren't guaranteed to last. Again, so I just I think it's a little bit funny, and I found something interesting down here. So while it's great to see markets, market rallies and see new organizations turn uh, attention to this emerging asset class in a new way, we cannot emphasize how important it is to understand that investing in crypto is not without risk. That's investing full stop. And then later on it goes to talk about how you know, it's less volatile than you know, traditional forms and all the rest of it. Traditional forms are super volatile at the moment. Even they jump up all over the place uh, and there's no guarantees that they're going to last. There's so many zombie companies out there and, you know, will they still be the same once this pandemic is over and, you know, once all the stimulus stops? You know, I think it's just a personal choice. I, I agree that it's risky and it's not without risk, but all investing is risky and not without risk. I do agree cryptocurrencies, because it's a lot less regulated, is a little bit more risky. But, you know, they make it sound like it's just completely wild, wild west and out there. Look, there are scams out there. And again, like the one coin and all that. So, yes, it's risky. But if you've done some research, understand, you know, what coins have been around for a while, got teams and have been working for a long time, you know, and all the rest of it. I think it's, you know, not as risky as what they kind of make it sound. But I would agree that it is not without risk. I just don't know if it's as risky as what people say. Look, could it drop back 50% tomorrow? Yes. Long term, I think you're going to be just fine. Bitcoin has been the best performing asset ever. There's not been an asset that's performed better. I think it will continue to be that way for some time. Now, again, that is just my personal opinion. None of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But I can only go on based on what I've seen, what it's done previously. And it's done it for basically sort of, you know, almost 12 years now it, you know fads don't last 12 years you know if something's lasted 12 years it's probably going to last another 12 and then if it's lasted 24 there's a good chance it'll last another 24 that's just the way things generally go don't get me wrong there could come a time where it'll come to an end and for whatever it's no good or just it's not the thing anymore but i think it's got a long way to go before that happens i think my personal opinion is bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are you know, yes, risky, but they are the best uh, possible gains you're going to find anywhere uh, in the, you know, for probably years to come. You just have to accept that you may lose 50% or more of your money at a time 
and then you just have to hold for it to you know go back up particularly in things like bitcoin ethereum uh, and again litecoin and all the rest of it and look it could be more than 50 percent. it could be 80 percent. but i think now that institutions have come in and things have been regulated i'm not sure we'll see the 80 percent drop in bitcoin ever again i don't think we'll see it in litecoin ever again i don't think we'll see it in ethereum ever again i do think we could definitely see 50 percent retracements but i think the days of the 70 to 90 percent for the ones that have got regulation they're kind of done and dusted people just you know they, they won't sell down to those uh sort of prices anymore people will you know be a little bit more uh clued on to how it works uh, and they will hold 50 percent wouldn't surprise me at all but i don't see the big ones uh, going back anymore and I think you know the traditional markets are just as risky I mean you know oil went to minus 40 who would have believed that could have ever happened I, I certainly couldn't and I couldn't imagine you would find anyone that would say oh yeah I knew oil was going to minus 40 dollars it's just it's unheard of so yeah I did find it interesting that he made it out to be you know this you know really risky thing look investing full stops risky it doesn't matter what you invest in you can invest in apple tomorrow and for whatever reason something drastic happens and then all of a sudden it's worth nothing facebook same thing all of a sudden there's something better that comes out and facebook disappears we can't predict the future we can just make educated guesses and i think there's a lot of good cryptos out there that have real world use and are going to be around for the long term and the upside to those is massive compared to the downside now please don't get me wrong i'm not saying go out and chuck all your money into cryptocurrencies if you've done your research and you fundamentally believe in it and all the rest of it it is your choice what you do with your money don't let me or anyone else tell you what you should or shouldn't do you have to make your own decisions but you live and die by the sword as they say the traditional markets uh, been around for a long time and you know don't get me wrong they've made people money but the average investor is not going to make life-changing money from traditional finances the way we normally do and get someone else to handle your money the big money is you invest in yourself and that's how you make the money now i'm not saying that means being an investor it might mean you have to go into work for yourself become your own you know uh self-employed and all the rest of it but I can tell you right now, putting your money in other people's hands, unless you've got tons and tons and tons of it, you're not going to get rich. You're going to have to make some decisions on your own. You're going to have to do some research and you're going to have to get a little bit lucky. That is simply how it works. Uh, I'm not against banks. I'm not against financial advisors. But for as long as I can remember, they've been telling me, uh, you know put your money in traditional finances and all this you know the the three four percent you can get a year is you know you know what's good and that's what everyone should be doing don't touch bitcoin don't touch cryptocurrencies they're a scam they're going to fail and all the rest of it now all of a sudden a couple of years later they're like oh no you should be putting one to two percent maybe even up to five percent and then in the future it's going to be you should be putting up to 30 40 50 percent and then in the future it'll probably just be the thing now no guarantees that that happens and again that is not financial advice it is my personal opinion only but that just goes to show that you can't tr fully trust anyway i'm not saying don't trust them at all but you can't fully trust someone else with your money because guess what they want they want to make it as easy for them to get your money i'm going to say that again they want to make it as easy as they can for them to get your money if it was too hard and too much work then they just wouldn't want to do it and so that is why i am a bit gun shy of those kind of people i i, I just I, I'm, I'm wary of them because i remember uh, a number of times i spoke to banks about cryptocurrencies and all the rest of it and financial advisors and they all said nuts nah, crap it's a scam you'll lose everything well look they still could be right i'm not saying they are wrong because you know we've got to stand in the test of time but again, Bitcoin after 12 years and all the institutional money that's going into it, I don't think it's going anywhere. Uh, Ethereum, been around for a long time, got you know all this promise behind it, still could fail. But, uh, ETH 2.0 could you know just not work out, we don't know. But it's been around a while. It has massive development happening on it. There's a lot of people and a lot of smart people getting behind it. Could it fail? Yes. But so could Amazon, so could Facebook and all the rest of it. 
it's an educated guess i don't think so and the upside to it is just too much again i wouldn't put everything into just one thing diversify now i've put a lot into crypto don't get me wrong but i've diversified throughout that just in case one doesn't work and something else performs better then i'm all right look if all of crypto failed i would be you know i would be hurting but i'd survive i'd make it i just find another way to make money that's just simply how it works but I fundamentally believe in it and I believe it is the best opportunity for me to change my life and for the better. Make the kind of you know wealth where I don't have to work a Monday to Friday sort of 9 to 5, 40 hours a week and slug it out and you know just barely get by. I can make enough that I can you know follow my passions and not have to worry geez can I pay for the rent uh, you know next week or am I ever going to be able to afford to buy a house in the future and you know will I be able to leave anything for my family and all the rest of it I believe this is going to change that uh, and you know I have to follow what my heart's telling me so that's what I've done all right let's go over here we'll have to refresh this 673 billion so it's slowly but surely creeping up now there has been a pullback uh, slightly but look it may have jumped back up again so let's have a look what's happened refresh 600 oh there we go it's jumped up four billion dollars in about 15 minutes so the market just keeps getting stronger and stronger guay uh, gas at 28 coming down and again bitcoin getting the dominance getting ever so close to that 65 percent but have a look at these kind of numbers. Some of the altcoins at the moment are doing unbelievable. Litecoin up 55% in seven days and 12% in 24 hours. Now again, we need to keep in the back of our mind there could be a correction and it could be a near 50% correction. So we go from sort of, you know, $25,000, $24,000, you know, down to maybe 12, you know, 13, $14,000. Totally possible. But that is normal for these markets. It's what it's, you know, done its entire lifetime. So unless something drastically changes this time, which there's no indications that anything has drastically changed, it's just part of the cycle. And if you simply understand the cycle and you hold till, you know, again, I'm going to say anywhere from August to December next year, somewhere around about there, but maybe even pushed out till February sort of 2022, that's where the cycle high is going to be. If you've taken some profits along the way and at least got your money back and hopefully even more so than taking your money, taken some profits, everything after that is just gravy. It's mood bags. No, no matter what happens, it won't matter. As long as that's your, uh, you know, your plan and you, know, you stick to that plan, chances are you'll be fine. But look, nothing's guaranteed in life. You know? Anything could happen and we just need to keep that in the back of our mind. All right, 24 hours. What's the really big movers though? What's been pumping? All right, the graph again, this has really been moving. So um, yeah, it hasn't even been out that long and look, 90%. So well done to the graph. Swiss Borg, Litecoin. So again, up there. Uh, Champion, I don't uh, know what that is, but just scraped into the top 100. Uh, so not some bad gains, but really the rest of it's just kind of single digit gains which is not too bad. It's not horrible at all. What about losses though? Any big losses? Yes, there has been. So empty set dollar, that's hurting a little bit. That's really going to smack you about. Uh, and then look, the rest of them, that's not too bad at all. In 24 hours, you know, they're down, you know, sort of 5% thereabouts. Look at the gains they've made over seven days though. So of course they're going to pull back a little bit. It's to be expected. Again, Algorand up 13%, nearly 14% for the week. And so, if, yes, it's pulled back. Ave Link pulled back. Ren's pulled back a little bit. You know, these are the things that happen. All right, last but not least, we'll get onto the Bitcoin chart. So this is what we need to look at. Now, we have had one hell of a run, and this is the only real sort of pullback that we've had. And again, this was about, you know, it was 17%. So there we go, 17%. So that's a reasonable pullback. Uh, and again, there are some differences to the market this time, and that's that institutions are here. And they're still just getting in right now. So we may not see a really big pullback until much later. Maybe 35,000, maybe 50,000, maybe again, right before we get to that big 50,000 mark, that's when, you know, big companies who've bought thousands or hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin sell some to take some profit to remain liquid. And fair enough, 
That doesn't mean it's all over. It doesn't mean it's going to end right then and there. But look, if Bitcoin goes to, let's say, 47,000 and has a 40% retracement, that still leaves us basically where we are right now, probably a little bit higher, but thereabouts. So no one will have lost uh, any money, really, uh, who's invested now. Don't get me wrong. People who invest after this absolutely could. But I just want us to keep in mind that if we were to have a sort of 40% retracement, hallelujah, right back down to this 13.8. So it is completely possible that it happens right now, but it's a, a thing of probabilities. Again, all this news about other, you know, Grayscale are still buying it, uh, PayPal and Square Cash App are buying up all the newly minted uh, Bitcoin plus you know other Bitcoin and all these other entities are buying Bitcoin OTC. Once the OTC runs out, everyone has no choice but to come to the exchanges. And I think the exchanges only have about 2.5 million Bitcoin in total across all of them. So there's going to be some big price movements uh, not too in the not too distant future, in my opinion. And again, how high that pushes us, who knows? But the scary part is retail isn't here they are the biggest buyers you know you can talk about these you know hundreds of millions of dollars you know that these companies are putting in that's not going to be anything compared to once the retail gets here against one you know when the rest of the world wakes up and paypal's offering uh bitcoin to them and square cash app and your local bank and you know all these other places have suddenly got bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies going and the basically the world starts to use it the prices are going to go absolutely mental and you know it'll really melt faces people just will not be able to believe i know when i first came to crypto in 2017 and then i'd heard all this stuff and i'm here watching and i just thought this has got to be a scam this is rubbish nothing can do this this is impossible and you know i got in around about september october late 2017 and, you know, just in those last six weeks, I mean, I saw crazy sort of stuff. And not even last six weeks. I mean, it went a little bit longer than that. It was more about sort of eight weeks, right up through to December, January. Well, there you go. There's three months. So we're talking more 12 weeks. But the kind of gains that some of those coins were making, I mean, Bitcoin was, I think, $8,400 in very late September 2017. So three months later it had doubled and a half in price. And that kind of stuff is going to happen again. That is how crazy it's going to get uh, late in the piece. And again, once it's starting to do things like that, you know, basically double in, you know, a week, 24 hours or something like that, that might be the cue for you to sort of take some profits. If not, you know, completely sell out, depending on what your plan is. Uh, again, I know my plan, I've given people, you know, kind of how I plan on doing it, you know, around about sort of August, September next year, I'll start to slowly scale out, not massive amounts, because I just don't know when it's going to cycle out, but I'll probably at least get back the money that I've put in and some profit. And then after that, uh, you know, I won't sell too much Bitcoin. I'll probably sell maybe 30% of my Bitcoin, if that, maybe more 20 to 30%, possibly 20%. Uh, and the rest I'll just hold because I bought it at a really good price. I was lucky. But all my altcoins, and I literally mean all of them, I'll probably sell 50% of them. But not in one big hit. I'll be scaling out slowly. Because if the prices continue to go up, as I said the other day, let's say uh, XRP, for example. If I sell all my XRP at $10, don't get me wrong, I'll have made a sweet penny. But what happens if it goes up to $35? I'll have missed out on so much. So it'll be scaling out bit by bit by bit by bit on the way up, hopefully. And then hopefully by the time it reaches its peak and I start to see, you know, the big drop, I'll have, you know, I'll have made the kind of money that I'll have wanted to. And again, all the rest of it, uh, you know, I'll just hold for a later time uh, and hope that, you know, I've invested in the ones that have uh, longevity. But look, if I don't, it won't matter. That old saying... No one ever lost money taking profits. You may have missed some unrealized gains, uh, but you won't have lost money. And that's what I'm about. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hit that like and subscribe button down below. Hopefully you're still on that gain train.
and I'll see you next time.